Welcome back for another episode of the Game Boys Podcast. This is episode three. The day is March 17th. It's St. Paddy's Day. I'm here with Bowman. Hey guys, glad to be here on St. Paddy's Day. Got my um, large pint of Guinness right in front of mm-hmm, me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, Just gotta take a sip here. I've got that. <sighs> I'm uh, lusting for that large mug of green beer that green beer nothing says like ireland and like a green like Bud mm-hmm, light mm-hmm. Yeah. yes yeah you stole my stole me lucky charms <laughs> i love saint patty's day oh man i'm like a fifth irish man right yeah i don't I, my name is patrick that's all i gotta say so uh got some uh interesting topics for you today nothing too crazy happening in the week of uh gaming uh, I believe Bowman's got something for us, so what do you got, Chief? Well, it looks like the, well, rumor has it that the PS5 has got some developer kits that are already out there. Oh? So, that's a, that's a big rumor going on right now, that apparently it's already in development. That, there, that So, it just kind of more and more uh, points to the fact that, that in E3 we'll probably get an announcement about the PS5. Yeah. I think i said that in episode one yeah um i think that's what it was pointing to with the discontinuation of the vita and ps3 games on ps plus i mean, it's funny that this came up because i was just yesterday reminiscing about the ps3 that never was <laughs> the you mean one like the boomerang right well the boomerang and they were like you're gonna be able to hook up Nine controllers or something like yeah. that. Like, you're going to be able to play a whole team of Madden on <laughs> one system. Like, uh, Yeah, so I was thinking about that yesterday and how like once they announced it, it was just totally – they just never mentioned any of that stuff again. Um, it was a mess of just, oh, uh, you can pick, hook up your PSP and you can see a, a rear view mirror – in this racing game, so if you want to, you can put the PSP behind you, and you can look behind you and see if you behind you. They had it was a very weird. I mean, that's that goes down like that was a 2006 conference, I believe. It, it goes down as like one of the worst conferences in like E3 history. That was the Wii. That was the Wii year mm-hmm. where they announced the name and stuff. Yeah, the Wii. I guess in contrast, the Wii was like huge that year. The PS3, everyone was just like what is going on with this system couldn't even pre-order it though yeah i remember i called gamestop after the the e3 conference and i was like i want to order the ps3 and they were like we don't have it we don't have any pre-orders for it it was weird such a change of tune nowadays because i feel like it doesn't matter as long as they know it's coming they have a pre-order for it pre-orders open so yeah ps5 i don't know man I, i this is like the first time i feel like i've ever felt this way about a console but not ready for the PS5. I'm not ready for the announcement I, I got, yet. I got um the I'd never have played my PS4 and been like, yeah, this thing's on its way out. Yeah, like it just it does exactly what I need it to do, and I feel like it's there's a there's a life cycle to a system. There's the beginning where you don't have many games and you're kind of working your way up and you're making your way in the gaming world, and then there's uh there's like that middle period where the system is thriving and then you have that ending period where you know it's like the 3ds now where it's on its way out obviously but i really feel like the the ps4 is in that in that middle period that lively that lively period where it's got tons of good games to play and they're still coming out at a great rate yeah i that's where I'm at with it. I, I kind of got a PS4 late in the cycle, but as you said, whenever I play any PS4 games, I'm never just like, oh, this looks this looks bad. I, I just, yeah. I don't know. The thing is, I want to talk about like, what can they possibly talk about with the system that's going to get people hyped on and on board with it? I really, I don't know. I, I mean, it's all going to boil down to games. It always does with, with PlayStation. But 
what is like some feature they're going to come out with that it's going that it's going to make everyone go oh wow that's pretty cool i i i should make the next step what can they possibly do i don't know something eh, i don't know i was gonna say something with vr but that doesn't sell very well no um i think maybe i mean obviously it's going to be a technological powerhouse it's going to do 4k it's going (laughs) to do 60 fps it's going to you know um I think that it needs to. We were just talking about this. I really hope that it has PS4 backwards compatibility, because then that for people like me, I can skip the PS4 Pro or whatever. Yeah. Never have to worry about ever wanting or getting one because eventually, if they don't have backwards compatibility, and then down the line in ten years, I'm gonna want a PS4 Pro because I'm gonna have a 4K TV by then. And I'm going to want to play it in the best possible way. So um, that's just kind of how it gets when you're 10 years away from a game and you're like, I want to play this game. You want to play it in the best possible fidelity. Yeah. So uh, I, th- I don't know. You know. Who knows? I really I, I can't see anything that they can offer that's going to make people want to buy a new four or $500 console. Because the PS4 is great right now. It just doesn't need it. It doesn't need anything. I didn't even think it needed the PS4 Pro. No. So. I really don't. I, I see comparison pictures of the PS4 Pro and the PS4, and I'm just like. You can't tell. I can't tell the difference. This is silly. Like, what is the point of this? I mean, you need to have, like, the TV that it's made right. for to right. see the difference. But. So, yeah, it is what it is. You know, PS5, whatever. I'm not excited about it. Uh, just real quick, I figured. We talk a little bit about the uh, Sonic Mania Woo, I physical you talk release. About this. Yeah, yeah. Um, I Sonic Mania was one of my favorite games from last year. I'm a big Sonic fan, and Sonic games haven't been good in like 20 years. What was so, the last good Sonic game, in your opinion? What was the, the last good one or the last one I liked? Is a big difference. I didn't play Generations. I heard it was okay. Is that the one where they brought back the original the, Sonic? The like, little fat Sonic, yeah. yeah. Um, but still, mediocre reviews. I would say the last good, good Sonic game, probably Sonic CD. Really? That far back? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I really liked Adventure 1 and 2, but that was also a different time. It didn't age well. No. Because I... Cause I have you ever tried replaying it yeah it's not good it's especially the first one is really janky it's really bad but i remember back then like yeah when it came out it was amazing yeah everyone's now trashing on it but when it was out everyone loved it yeah it was a good it was really cool because we, we were still new to open op, air quote open world type 3d games like that that wasn't common yet yeah so yeah i'd say the last good sonic game that you could still play today and be like oh this is a good game Sonic CD. Sonic. So Sonic Mania, my opinion, the best Sonic game. Period. Better than all of them. But the best Sonic game. Better than one, two, three. Sonic and Knuckles. Sonic CD. It's hands down the best Sonic game. They nailed that perfect sense of speed without doing what like Sonic One would do, where it's like, yeah, I'm getting going, and then they, you just run into something mm-hmm. and get hurt. That was the issue I've always had with Sonic because I never really quite got into the series as much as you did. There was a, there was a few of them I liked, but yeah, I always felt like that you couldn't actually do what it would show that what what people would claim it could do. Yeah, Sonic Mania does that really well. So you there's a, so many times we feel like you're just blazing through the whole level, and. Uh, there's like if you look at the maps compared to the other Sonic maps, so many different routes you can take, so many different you know easy or hard route, and then like there's hidden levels and stuff through all the all the stages. Really good. Um, so yeah, they're coming out with a physical version, which is a big deal. It was it's you know like I said, it's the best Sonic game, and you want to preserve it. You want it to be around in 20 years. I mean, people are still playing Sonic two and three and sonic cd so why wouldn't they want to play this one it was just such a no-brainer like why did they not launch it this way were they really nervous that it wouldn't sell so here's the real (laughs) here's the real kicker is that that box that they had the the limited edition box that they sold for 70 dollars 
when the game first came out, if you bought that, you're probably fucking steamed right now because <laughs> Yeah, it's seventy bucks. It can't. It didn't come with a game. It came with a digital code yeah. for the game, and then a bunch of plastic shit, like a Sonic the Hedgehog statue on top of a Sega Genesis, or a, a ring, a plastic gold ring, or whatever. I like how they didn't want to put the money out to release a physical version, but they but they were okay coming out with a giant obnoxious toy. Yeah, just a bunch <laughs> of garbage in a box. Yeah. Yeah. So. If you bought that, you're probably really pissed off right now yeah, because cranked. they're coming out with a. Uh, it's a. It's a pretty nice mm-hmm. collector's version. It's pro. It's like forty bucks, and it comes with a art book and uh, the game. The manual of the game has a reversible cover with a Genesis cover on it. So, yeah, uh, if you have not played Sonic Mania and you've had any interest in it. You should buy this uh, physical version. It's coming out for PS4, Xbox One, and uh, Switch. That's where I'm at, man. I mean, I was I was holding out for a physical copy because I just <laughs> I knew that well, especially once this game was so well received, I just went, okay, it's a matter of time till it gets physical. I'm not buying a digital. They let you do everything, and like they take they take off all the the training wheels and stuff, and they're just like, okay, you want to play with. Uh, Tails and Knuckles as a two-player team, you can do that. If you want to play with two Tails, you can do that. If you want to play with two Knuckles, you can do that. Like, if you want to play the whole game just as Knuckles, you can do that. If you want to play the whole game just as Tails, you can do that. It, it, you know, they however you want to play the game, you can play it. So in this new uh, version, they're adding a few new characters, and I think maybe a few new stages as well. Um... Yeah, it's like a big DLC pack that they're releasing to people who already paid for the game for free. And then it's going to be physical. Are they the going to continue? Is there any news about continuing this series? I would I would be I'd be very surprised if there wasn't some form yeah. of a sequel. Sega finally figured out how to make good Sonic games. Let someone Don't else make do it. it. Let someone else do yeah. it. <laughs> Let a fan make it. Yeah, this Multiple is a fans. fan-made game. Uh yeah. well, it's not a fan-made game. It's Made by a guy who used to make fan make multiple fan-made people games. in Battle the Project worked on yeah. fan projects. Mm-hmm. So no Nintendo Michael could Jackson possibly uh, learn one. a thing or two from that because I mean I don't I feel like the new Super Mario Brothers where they try to revive the platforming aspect of Mario was kind of a it was cool at first and it just got kind of whatever. Yeah, I think that'd be a really cool way for this. This is off topic, but I feel like Nintendo should take some cues from this and release like a new mario brothers platforming the problem is fans. that uh they don't have any problems selling mario That's, games okay this is <laughs> touche I mean, <'cause, laughs> the reason why sega did this because they couldn't make sega a good sonic shit game. in our face forever until they gave us this yeah so you know maybe it, maybe we'll get sequels and stuff i would be i would be very surprised if we don't yeah so Got a huge catalog. Cause Sonic Media is like a mix between new and old stuff. Got a huge catalog of Sonic levels you can redo. And, you know, maybe... Obviously, this guy's specialty is doing 2D games, but, you know, maybe eventually you do a Sonic Adventure game. Done right? Yeah, like a 3D Sonic Adventure with a mix of old Sonic Adventure levels with new ones. That'd be cool. So, you know, who knows? uh you had a new you had another topic for us yeah let's get to the next topic well uh i've actually been anticipating this game for a long time but i've it's made me think about another thing and that's that sea of thieves is about to come out Uh it's been highly anticipated for a long time it's one of uh it's rare's next big title it's a pirate game if you don't if you're unaware of it it's a team based game where you have a pirate crew and you're both working together to get treasure and you can you fight against other pirates and you play in many different ways and it's getting a dual release on on uh, the microsoft store and also mm-hmm. which is pc so and the xbox one but microsoft is pushing the hell out of this game they're giving away for free for new xboxes right now if you buy an xbox you get the game for free and the X- xbox game pass is going to have it at right. launch which is also kind of crazy mm-hmm. so to me it just shouts desperation on microsoft's yeah part. for sure and what is the 
we could talk about this forever, but like, what is the future of the Xbox at this point? And because it, it just it's not really um, reassuring to E3 coming up. Because I I looked at this and kind of analyzed it and went, okay, this game should be helping them. They should be trying to make money on this game and selling this game. So what's going on with Microsoft and what's going to happen at E3? Because they clearly just are running out of ammunition. Well, I think that they're desperate for exclusives. They don't have them. Yeah, and, but you're giving away your only exclusive. Right, so it's like what Sega did with Sonic. Right. So they're basically taking that approach and hoping, you know, that they're going to that's going to sell systems yeah. because they have nothing. They don't have anything. You need you you need a game. You need multiple games that make someone say, "I'm willing to spend $400 on this console." And to play these games. And right now, they just don't have them. Too many games. Would it, is there really... Would it, I think one game that I can think of off the top of my head, I can't play between all my computer and my systems. That's Sunset Overdrive. <laughs> well, I mean... Oh. <laughs> well, I mean, you can't play... I don't I don't know. I don't know if I got a release on the Microsoft Store or not. I what? think it did. If it got released on PC. What did? Sunset Overdrive? No, it, no didn't. it didn't. So that's so like that's one point. of a few that I can't play and it's not enough to make me want to buy this game. So I feel like they're kind of confused and maybe ready to call it quits with the Xbox and say, let's just make games on PC. I think so. I think that was already a clear sign when they started to do the cross-platform approach because I mean, many people speculate the future of consoles and it, and it's going to it's going to boil down to brand names in the future and like kind of like you know like a, like publishers and stuff and a, a lot of these co- hardware companies are going to end up becoming big publisher companies releasing on PC and everything i think what they should do or what they might end up doing is selling an Xbox branded computer really yeah so they sell uh, you know like an xps or whatever they sell a computer that has the xbox logo on it and they say this game will or this computer not only has windows 10 on it can do normal computer things it will guaranteed play all these xbox games that's that, actually not a bad approach that will you know for x amount of years like this is the xbox computer you know 2018 and from and then until we announce a new one it's guaranteed to play the games that we release under our publishing name of microsoft or whatever so it's a, it's a really weird situation for them because they do have there's still brand loyalty to the xbox name people still i still walk around and talk to people and people will, like I, i'm not even no joke like non-ironically say i'm an xbox boy like i'm not mm-hmm. even joking when they say that like people actually People attach themselves to brands, just like yeah. people attach themselves to like Apple and like I only buy Apple products, even though the product yeah. isn't doing anything better than in the competition. Right. They, they just like that having that brand. Well, I think so. Yeah, when it comes to this Xbox thing, I really think that you know, you look at the the Nintendo Switch and you kind of look at the way consumer electronics and stuff are going, and. I think they're really looking into and testing the waters for like, like I said, they don't make, I don't believe Microsoft uh, makes computers right now. And it might be an issue because it could be viewed as like a monopoly or something since they make the operating system yeah. already. Um, but yeah, so you could essentially make the PC with xbox logo on it's an xbox branded pc and um not just desktops but you could do laptops you know the laptops are more expensive you could even do tablets that's where the nintendo switch type of thing comes in and you know you just make a super powerful tablet or you know it's called what do they have that 360s or something like that the the shit one the light yeah the xbox 360 arcade no, it's the oh, you mean like the, the C, the, third generation? the E one, yeah, the E yeah, series, the one that looks like the Xbox One, right? So yeah. you basically could have one of those where it's just like, oh, well, you want a tablet, 
So because you're an old lady or whatever and you have some kids that want to play games, so you mostly use tablets. You don't have a use for a desktop or a laptop. You mostly want to watch it for Netflix. So you buy the uh, Xbox PC E tablet. It's weak. It's not going to play your games in 4K and stuff, but it will guaranteed play all the Microsoft branded games in 720p or whatever. Yeah. So I think that's a possibility of where it could go. It just... I've always felt like they had this problem, and if 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 the PS3 had caught its stride earlier, I think we would have seen this too because the PS3 did so poorly, um, and when it first started, when it first came out for the first few years, plus it came out a year or two after the 360, right. um, that's the only reason that the 360 did as well as it did. It also didn't paid, have paid a lot the of way for uh, indie games and, and that, online gaming and stuff. Yeah, sure. Yeah. That's a, I agree. And that was all, you know, taken care of by the end of the PS3 right. life it's, cycle. That's the, that's the issue is that it did things that weren't. No one else was doing. No one else was doing yet. But now it's just such a um, okay, great. Like everyone's doing this now. So what makes you stand out now? And they don't have that. And I think they're struggling. And I think it's a struggle with them because the system doesn't exactly bomb. It's not like a Nintendo Switch level. Right. So it's like one of those things where I feel like they're having the conversation of like, do we continue? Well, it's not failed. Yeah. Because it still sells. Yep. Yeah, it's in a weird spot. It's, yeah. Um, I don't think there's ever room for a third major console player. I think there is always a third one, and that's always the one that that's the loser. Well, I just get nervous about the idea of it not having one, just because we need to have that 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 yeah. console there. Because if Microsoft flat out drops off, Sony's gonna get more shitty. Yeah, because they don't have anyone to compete with. Yeah, the, Nintendo's too different. We all we all, everyone sat here and pointed the finger at Microsoft when they wanted to make the move of. Uh, games being only able to play on your own system and they had to be uh, locked online and all that that could have easily happened with Sony that could have easily happened yeah Go yeah ahead. so I think it's uh, it's always good for more competition I don't want to see Microsoft go away I don't want to see the Xbox go away I don't own an Xbox One I will eventually uh, it would help if they stopped releasing revisions because now I'm like Oh, I was about to buy an Xbox One, and now I'm like, eh, well, I guess I'll just wait a few years till the Xbox One X is 150 bucks, right? Instead, you know, instead of 500, that's where I was with the Xbox One. It started getting down to like 150 on like holidays and stuff, and I was like, eh, you know, maybe, maybe I'll play, you know, replace the 360 in my entertainment center because it'll play Xbox 360 games and even some Xbox games, so. You know, maybe I'll replace it, and then they announced the Xbox One X, and I'm like, "Well, why would I buy that now when I can get when I can wait a few years and get the much nicer one that's going to be like future proof, basically?" It's just weird because like people trash on the Xbox a lot, but I do like a lot of things it does. Like it, did, they did um, bring back backwards compatible gaming, and rather they've always been really fierce about it. Like yeah. Sony used to be really all about that. Like they were like one of the original ones who mm -hmm. were really all about it, and then it just sort of fell apart. And Microsoft even went out recently and said, you can play your original Xbox games. Like it's just, but, and I know it's desperation, but the, but it comes out of the fact that they really want you to buy this system. I mean, so. it's important to some people. If Sony came out at E3, just going back to what we're talking about for PS5, if Sony came out at E3 and said, this is the ultimate PlayStation machine. It will play every playstation game ever released you can replace all your sony consoles in your entertainment center so happy. you can take <laughs> get rid of your ps4 your ps3 your ps2 your ps1 it will play all those games plus the new games i'd be like, I, it's a day one purchase for me i would pre-order it i pre-order pre it because yeah. i'd be like just this, because of the space and the hdmi slots and stuff that it takes up i still have to have my ps3 hooked up yes yeah because it plays ps1 games and there's still, you know, somewhat modern PS3 games coming out occasionally. And, like, the, you know, that system is not that far removed. No. And there's multiple downloadable titles and things that, you know, PS Plus still has games coming out for it. It's like, so I, I have to keep that system hooked up because, you know, I've got, I've still got games I want to play for it. So 
yeah it's just if if they could if they could replace if they could you know that stuff's important so yeah i i I think that i think that xbox has a, a a place i i just think that they need to focus more on exclusives i really do um they have an interesting thing going where they have by far the strongest most powerful console they need to take advantage of that stuff they need to find studios that are ex experts in making like really artistic you know super high def 4k stuff like for instance if they could have got um this is obviously like a Sony first party or whatever title basically, but like that Horizon Zero Dawn game, if that came out on Xbox One X instead with all the HDR plus and the 4K running at 60 frames a second, and you know, that would have been a huge deal probably because they were freaking out about how good it looked on the PS4 Pro. So... Yeah, like they need to be doing stuff like that, not fucking Call of Duty where everything's brown and gray and looks like shit. But to uh, to piggyback on that, is there any market for that anymore? Is, is the way the video game market works now is that possible anymore to to hold games hostage like that so much anymore? I know it happens a lot with Sony, but there's, but a lot of it is just a loyalty to the company. They know. They have this audience of gamers for this system. They know I, it, game developers can be at least be more picky about where they put their games on now. Yeah, and I think it's kind of reverse because back then consoles really would uh like like Nintendo era like you, it was like a, you wanted your game on that system right because it was everywhere. And now we're in, we're at a point where game developers are just like I want to release my game is I want to release my game on a on a mobile device at this point. Mm -hmm. I want to put it everywhere. I want to put it in everyone's hands. And you can't tell me where to put my game at this point because I want to get as much, much sales as I possibly can. So it's really hard for Microsoft to offer a sweet enough deal to be like, hey, your, your game's only going to be available on this small market of people who don't own this console. But we hope more people buy it. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, interesting. I'm curious to see what ends up happening with them. So, mm -hmm. um, all right. So I figured we'd go over... Uh, you know what have you been playing recently? Uh, currently, I what, what what did I just beat? I just beat Doki Doki Literature Club. I finally got. I finally played that. The game is free for everyone. It is free on Steam, and I was told to play this for a long time. And yes, I should have played it a, a while ago. If you don't, I don't want to speak too much about the game, but just on a surface level, it's a visual novel romance game. But it's also maybe not. Yeah. So that's all I'll say on it. Um, you probably have, if if you if you um, do any video game research at all, you've probably seen it pop up at least or seen a reference to it. Mm -hmm. So I highly recommend it. It only takes about it took me about maybe people say it takes like four to five hours. It took me like maybe three and a half hours to beat it, and it's very straightforward. It's supposedly amazing from and that's and that's not like I'm I've been hearing that from like mainstream you know news game gaming news sites like ign and GameSpot and stuff like it's it's been critically acclaimed everywhere i don't mean to sound pretentious when i talk about it but it really does a really good job commenting on a lot of things that are not talked about so okay that's all i'll say on it and maybe i'll play it tonight i'm a huge fan of visual novels so i think if if I think it's for both both people. People who really like visual novels, like me, you're gonna appreciate a lot of things about it. Like I played it certain ways. Like I talked to more people about it. They'd be like, "Oh, I didn't notice that," and I'm like, "Well, I noticed it because I always play visual novels like right. this." So it really does a good job paying tribute to people who do play visual novels. But if you don't, I think it's for you too because it's it's kind of um it's kind of a parody of visual novels. Well, I've heard it like really subverts your expectations. Yes, it's almost like. Uh, frog fractions if you've ever yes, played that exactly it's that that's the perfect comparison really yeah okay so what do you what do you mean uh let's see what did i just beat um i just played this morning i was playing some wipeout collection for the ps4 nice love that game and uh yeah i never i've beaten the the one for the ps3 already which is the one i'm playing right now in that collection but uh it comes with the Vita version, 2048. Comes with the PS and both PS3 games, HD and Fury. Uh, really, really great collection. Um, 
definitely get your money's worth if you like your futuristic racing games. Uh, what I just beat Yakuza Zero finally, and I beat this week. I played through Mutant Muds for the PS4. I, I just started the, playing that too. Yeah, the limited run release of it. So I have the physical game, and I decided that I needed to play through some of these limited run games that I have sitting on my shelf. Yeah. So I uh, grabbed that one and played through it. It is a extremely abusive platformer. I have already can tell in the beginning, man. Uh, I don't know I'm how nervous. far you've played on. I've only played in the first like areas and stuff, and I'm just like anticipating that it's going to get very It's really interesting. It's almost like the way I was thinking about it when I was playing it and how I was going to describe it was it's like a timing-based platformer. It's almost like... It's not quite a rhythm game, but everything is timing. Like, it's not... There's some pixel-perfect jumps and stuff, but it's all about when you jump, when you attack the the enemies, you know, when you... When should you move to this new platform? It's all... Everything you do is based on timing. So, definitely worth checking out if you like platformers if you're listening and you play platformers this one is great it's um, on sale um if you're listening out there it's actually still on sale uh nintendo eShop's got a lot of crazy indie deals right now and it's like 50 percent off right now it's like seven dollars for the collection on switch right now which is all three games yes yeah so if you have a switch check it out if you love platformers um so now that i've got yakuza zero out of the way I am finally going to start my Mr. Mosquito <laughs> for the PS2. I've been uh, been waiting to play this game for about 20 years almost, and I finally got it in my grasp. Got my PS2 component cable today. <laughs> um, it would take a whole podcast to explain what's been going on with Pat's retro setup right now. Yeah, uh, just know my, my CRT TV's broken and everything is in disarray. <laughs> Um, so I'm ready to play Mr. Mosquito and, uh, I'm probably going to be doing a, uh, video on it. A Game Boys review. Ooh, the Game Boys videos. Yeah. Do so, still do those? Yeah, we do now. <laughs> <laughs> so make sure you go subscribe on YouTube to the Game Boys. I'm going to go there now and wait every day for it. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I've been up to. Uh. Uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about was that the Limited Run Games actually went ahead and announced their first Switch game. It's going to be, uh, I, I feel like I'm pronouncing Thimbleweed it wrong. Park. Thimbleweed Park. I feel like I pronounced it wrong. But that is going to be their number one Switch release. And they're actually doing something different. If, if any of you guys follow Limited Run Games at all, Limited Run Games is a website where they, we talked about the last podcast, where they take little known indie games or bigger known indie games lately and they press them on uh, limited limited uh, limited runs. They uh, they limited numbers, so they vary from like two thousand to like eight, I think I think Night Trap was like eight thousand copies, but it's it's still very minimal amount of copies. So the first one is Thimbleweed Park for Switch, and they're actually doing which I didn't think they would do this approach again, but they're actually going the pre order route, which they don't like the pre order route. Oh yeah, but they but what they claim on their Twitter is that they want to gauge the interest on the switch so because they don't they don't they claim they don't really know their audience and they I guess they want to they want to see how many people realistically are going to buy switch physical games right so before they start making them yeah so i think it's interesting to me because there's a lot of talk that the nintendo switch is like the next uh ps vita in ter- in terms of like not not like terms of success but in terms of like where people go for like niche indie titles Mm -hmm. so that march 30th or 31st date that's for pre-orders pre-order so So they're not going to be limited well it'll be limited to the pre-orders but it'll be a window but it'll be it'll be a right it'll be a okay i didn't know that yes there you go you don't have to wake up at like 10 a.m and like 9 to refresh refresh the page and right away add it to the cart no don't worry if you're listening out there and, and and are not a fan of their practices this one is going to be accessible. So, yeah, I mean, if you're listening, you've never heard of Thimbleweed Park. It's basically a LucasArts uh, point-and-click adventure-type game. Yeah, know? which I'm a huge fan of Day of the Tentacle and Maniac Mansion and Monkey Island. 
I I really like point and click adventure games, and I've been wanting to play this for a while. It's been on my my uh, it's been on my radar for a while. But the thing is, I don't really sit down on my PC too often. I just don't. I don't. I, right. I'm a, I'm a console gamer. I like sitting down, or I'm a handheld gamer, and I like which is great because it's coming on the Switch, so yeah. I can do both. So. Yeah, it's interesting. They're even going to release a. I'm 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 torn if I'm going to buy yeah, this edition or not. So am I. The uh, well, not the big box PC edition. Oh, they're doing a big box version of it. Like, for PC? No, they're releasing it. The, the, you know how they like to release things yeah. like in their old uh, style. Well, I'm talking about the collector's edition, the one with the phone book and. The... Yeah, that, well, that's what that's what it comes. Right, in. so I'm yeah. kind of torn on that as well because it seems cool, but. You know, have you've never even played the game? No, I've never played the game, and I really don't like. I, you know, it seems tempting, but I don't like spending an extra thirty bucks for a game that I've never even played. It's uh, yeah. It's, what if it's, I get it and I'm lukewarm on it? And it's, it's just thirty five for the Switch one. I mean, rather the um, regular standard for both PS4 and Switch. Right, we should note that too. It's also coming on PS4, and that the big box edition is sixty five dollars. Yeah. It comes with some cool stuff. Comes with a phone book and uh, it's got a lot actually. Yeah, it's got a uh, full color manual, interior cover print, newspaper, foldable menu poster, post-it notes, uh, and uh, hold on, because I took uh, uh, exclusive stickers, an exclusive phone book. Oh, interesting. That's kind of weird. Okay, so it looks like the Nintendo Switch one and the PS4 one are going to have different goodies in them. Womp womp. Kind of obnoxious because the PS4 one has the cassette tape, and the Switch does not. Sometimes they really feel like they prey on like people with compulsive buying problems and yeah. like collecting problems when I they mean, do stuff like that. They've gotten me a bunch of times, man. <laughs> I, yeah, I've had to, I've had to um. Well, because there's you know there's back. there's like maniacs out there that like buy every single. They're like I have to have the entire limited run collection. Well, they, they buy every game. They, they do they, the um the big bundles now where it's literally like they'll have like the yeah. the November tenth release where it's just literally like everything they're selling that day is a big in a giant bundle and you can buy it all at once. Yep. Which is just and I don't think it's any cheaper either. No. So. It's just like a three hundred dollar bundle of every game that they release on one day, including both the regular version and you know it comes with like the regular version and the collector's edition that but they're those selling. Those collectors are crazy, man. They want that shit. They're, they're like you. Well, I, they I, think I, they want it. They're just insane. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually, if you don't mind, um, I actually have a topic like yeah. that. We can cross into it. I wanted to talk about it. We kind of grazed upon this um, when we were hanging out earlier. Let's but... hear it. I want to talk about when is a collecting an addiction? When it, when is a collect when is collecting video games a hobby and when is it an addiction? Like when does it become unhealthy? I think there's a few well all right, so there's a few answers to that. When it becomes unhealthy is when your normal life is being negatively affected by it. Like you don't have money for it's just like any addiction you know drugs alcohol you don't have money to pay your bills but you're buying games or you're buying alcohol or you're buying drugs or whatever you know you don't have or you know your car's broken down and you're taking out a payday loan but you know you just got done buying two hundred dollars worth of games this week uh, I think that's when it becomes an unhealthy addiction. Clearly, I mean, there's no question about that. Um, now, this is strictly game collecting, not like playing. That's a different story. I mean, I think you know, there's all kinds of people that have game addiction problems as far as playing it, and they, you know, neglect their families and their kids, and you know, even people die from it from yeah. over yeah. from not sleeping. But this is strictly game collecting, so I think that's when it becomes. Uh, negative addiction is when it's like, you know, like I said, your car's broken down and you can't, you didn't have the hundred or two hundred bucks to pay for a new tire, but you like spent all your extra money on on games. I feel like there's not enough awareness of like consumerism addiction. Yeah, because w America, we have such a problem. With we it. do, yeah, such a problem because people are maxing out their credit cards and mm -hmm. putting themselves in debt, and so many people have such bad debts. And I, I bet you, if you sit down with them. 
Their debts are not for like their car repairs. Right. They're not for medical bills. I'm not saying that there are people out because there's plenty of people out there like that. Mm-hmm. But a lot of them are just like I I know someone personally who actually has an addiction to buying clothes. Yeah. And thousands of dollars in debt and like paying it off doesn't even pay rent. Lives at home and is still yeah. continuously in debt because of clothes shopping. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a fear of uh, missing out. Fear that, oh, oh, this game isn't going to be around or it's going to be more expensive later or, you know, in your case with the clothes, it's like, you know, this clothes, I'm not going to be able to find this shirt again after it sells out. And, yeah, it kind of, they kind of, uh, especially it's gotten really, really bad with everything in the last couple of years with, you know, limited run games, the Mondo posters, everything is a limited amount and you can only get it today and you can only get it at this one place or you have to wait in line for eight hours the, you have to get the lottery the, the ticket day one edition yeah the day that. one edition it's like you, you're gonna miss out if you don't buy it immediately you're never gonna be able to get it again and everything is like that vinyl records you know movie posters uh t-shirts yeah t fury it's only 24 hours it's on sale and then you'll never be able to get this shirt again to their defense that platform works for them just because i feel like a lot of this stuff wouldn't sell if it wasn't if it wasn't exclusive if it was sure like i'm just saying almost in almost every consumerist aspect of of everything now it plays into that you know the special edition games they have special edition dvds or blu-ray sets and stuff uh it's it's everything it really is you know that like one of the the biggest game last year zelda and it's one of the biggest series of all time so they know millions of people are going to buy it i should have been able to buy a collector's edition on the first day like the fact that it was that i if i wanted one i would have had to go to ebay and pay double what that what it was sold for like that kind of shit has to end you know it's going to sell so just make more of them you know, it's a, it's fucking Zelda, and they shipped like one per store, so it gets to the point where you create they they created these addictions. Yeah. So how, yeah. How, how do you um how do you cope with it? Because I mean, you and I like I feel like I definitely have teetered into it, like where it's I, I looked at my collection and it it it's not so much I'm not worried that I buy a lot of games because I buy them super cheap. I buy them yeah. really cheap. They're, my games are all, like, if I look at my shelf, most of them, I like, my Vita games, especially, if we're talking about that, because I own, like, 50 Vita games. A lot of them are, like, $10, $15 games. And... So the less less than the cost of a single Right, Xbox and I know most people whatever. out there, they go to, which is not good, because I know people with addictions, they go, well, that person does this, but still, I think, how do you um look at that and, and control yourself and just go, I need to, like... Like any advice out there to people who like who are who are going through this right now? Because I feel like there's a lot of people who go through it. I mean, I think that the important thing is to budget your money properly and only set aside X amount of money to spend on these things, and then you make smarter decisions. Yeah. So for me, you know, I have I get a certain amount of money every month to spend on whether it be going out with my friends or buying stuff. You know, and this, like, for instance, there's been some games that I, you know, might have bought, but I'm going to visit a friend out of town, so, I, and it was short notice, so I only had, like, two weeks notice that I'm going away on a trip, and I'm like, okay, well, I need to save my money to, so I can have some fun while I'm there, and I already have, you know, I have my monthly allowance that I give myself of what I can spend, and I'm like, okay, well, maybe I won't buy this game that limited run release because I don't know for sure if I'm even gonna like it and I I need the money to do other things. You start to make smarter decisions. If you budget the money and say, I'm only gonna spend this much this month on games, you make smarter decisions on what games. You and you say, Hey, well maybe I'll wait and you know, maybe it'll be cheaper down the line. What I recommend to people and what really helped me out was a combination of that too, actually the budget it did mm-hmm. help me a lot. Start playing your games. That's yeah. like the most basic thing you can do. You just look at your collection. So when you have that moment where you're looking online, because I'm so bad. It was really bad. Like I was looking at like GameStop constantly being like, what's on sale? What yeah. the games are on sale right now? I, cause I gotta get them cheap, cause they're gonna be expensive later. It was really, I, I honestly have to admit, like I, 
I was teetering towards it pretty badly. And what I did was I just went, you know what, I'm going to close my laptop and I'm going to look at my shelf because there's plenty of games I haven't touched. Yeah. Yet. Yep. For sure. That's that, And that's what I've been doing. And I've been playing through stuff. So yeah. um, that's a big part of it. And for me personally, uh, how I stopped buying or, or like caring about, you know, various games is I started asking myself, the hard question of realistically will I play this game yeah will I play this game and that has really trimmed down my my buying habits and also I've gotten rid of a lot of stuff and I just kind of I just ask myself like okay realistically with all the games that I have exactly. that I still yeah. need to play I've got two I've got 200 hours worth of rpgs staring me in the face right now and persona 5 and near that i plan on playing in the next couple months alone that i'm just like okay so i have only x amount of time per day i have all these games that i need to get to am i going to play this game that i have not cared enough to buy until now or you know whatever i'm looking at that i've never played that's coming out and a lot of times the answer is no, I'm not, probably not going to play it. I'm just like, you know, if I miss out on it, I miss out on it. And, you know, maybe one day I'll come across it for a few bucks at a garage sale or a thrift store or whatever. And maybe I won't. And I won't be, I probably won't be any worse off for it. And if, here's the thing is that a good majority of games drop in value. Yes. Like 95% of them, you know will eventually be cheaper than what they are when they first come out. If down the line, in five years, I still am looking at this game and saying, yeah, I want I, I should have bought that game when it came out. If And it's more expensive now. Let's say it's like a rare game and it's now $200, $150. If five years from now, I'm still looking at that game and being like, I want that game. Just buy I'll it. just buy it. Yeah. I'll just buy it for the, you know, because... Five out of, or you know, four out of five games, or nine out of ten games that you buy are going to be cheaper down the line. And so, if you adopt that mindset, even if you end up spending two hundred bucks on a few games down the line because they've shot up in price, you're still saving money in the long run. Exactly, because you're not letting it enter your real budget. Like you're not letting it interfere with your bills. You're not letting it interfere with your food, everything, basic things. And it's just. It just pains me because when I, when I see people who like just continue to go on and on and on about how they want to do certain things in their life and they're just spending money frivolously. Yeah, it's a lot of it's a problem with consumerism. So, yeah, I mean those that's my advice for that. So, I just uh, I had one more thing that to talk about before we go. Um, I don't know. I'm sure you probably heard about this. Uh, so the UK just banned its first game in over uh, 10 years the last game was man uh, was a uh, manhunt 2 can i guess what it is sure it's a gal gun 2 no no it is not <laughs> it is omega labyrinth z and it's a similar similar type of game to gal gun 2 it's like a fan service anime game yeah it's a fan service anime game um about high school girls and they banned it because of uh, it was sexualizing underage girls in high school, um, you know, anime girls or whatever. Uh, and I think it's like a sort of like a visual novel game. Yeah, it's got half naked anime girls. I'll play it. Right. So <laughs> this is always interesting to me. I don't want to get too political here. It's just they. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, I, I just I, I, I find it silly that you know they have uh, first of all, what's not even I, I don't want to get into this, but I'll just like to mention how fucking weird like be, like little kid beauty pageant stuff exists. <laughs> like if you've ever watched one of those, oh, like, it's... that stuff is fucking weird. And you want to talk about sexualization of kids. These kids are like six years old and you know, nobody, the audience that goes to those things, I don't want to even imagine the kinds of people that are interested in 
watching like six year olds dress in like weird outfits and put on like a hooker amount of weight, makeup on and stuff and like strap their stuff on stage like so it's just strange to me that that kind of stuff exists but like do they really is it a real thing that like someone's gonna play this anime game and be like i'm gonna go rape some schoolgirls. it's ridiculous man i mean the thing is i don't know it's a it's a really dicey topic it really is but there's a difference between i think it's a separate conversation of if we're talking about like lolicon hentai which is like flat out like little girl sure like porn like i get that i get that argument i get arguments against it but when it, when it, but when it comes to games like this where it's just like fan service and like you know right. they, they're, just, they're just like half naked and stuff like that i don't really understand it because they're it's animated it's animated people they're already fantasy no one no one um when it like if we're getting deep into like 2d anime culture discussion there's actually like a legit other problem where like people who are like addicted to these types of things they actually prefer fantasy over the over the reality right they don't even like 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 there's um what what point is it supposed to be an outlet exactly it's an outlet and but yeah they they it, it creates weird expectations of women um to these people so they actually prefer animated people so if anything you're preventing it's right, well, that's argument. what I was going to say. It's a dumb my, argument, but, it's, but it kind of... Yeah, go ahead. Well, my theory is that that kind of stuff... We've talked about this before and like, how uh, Japan is, like, very polite place. Everyone works hard. Everything's very orderly. Everything's clean. Everything runs on time. And uh, yet, when it comes to their, like, leisure, they're just like balls to the wall crazy like just everything is loud you go to their you go to their entertainment districts just non-stop it's loud it's a lot it's bright there's lights everywhere there's games everywhere there's noise coming from every direction it's crowded you know they have these weird the weird anime with all the monsters the tentacle porn and the and and then you like their but their uh but their you know communities are the opposite yes so I think there's an argument to be made that, and they have all this stuff. They have all the, the little, the lowly little girl like hentai and stuff. And I think there's an argument to be to be made. It's you know it's like when people would go to unwind and watch the at the Coliseum, watch people rip each other apart, like yeah, or watch MMA or whatever. You know, I think there's an argument to be had of you could theoretically be preventing these guys from living out their fantasies by giving them an outlet because no matter how you want to you want to twist it or or you know believe there are these people are out there whether you take away this this monger, this hentai, or whatever. You criminalize or not. it or not, and obviously you you have to criminalize child pornography because it's abusing girls. Right. It's, but but like what what is what is animated stuff really doing? See, but so so my argument and thought is, and I'm not necessarily advocating this type of of porn, but it's like the lowly hentai. Like the argument against child porn is that it creates victims of the children. It's a victim. It's a victim crime. The you can't use that same argument over drawings, so it's well. Im- you could say it's a gateway, just to like sure, play advocate, sure, it's a but, gateway drug. but at the same time, it could be it could be skewed as well. Maybe you're taking away, you're 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 moving some of the pressure on the victims of of child pornography by giving people another option, right? I mean, you know, I just just play devil's advocate. I do think so. So I think there is a place. I really do think there's a place in society for like, for weird to give people outlets for weird stuff like that. Um, you know, it's when you, whenever you make anything illegal, it's for a reason. It's because people were doing it before. Like that's right. why that's why you made it illegal. You didn't just wake up one day in the beginning of Earth and say, oh, we don't want people taking pictures of naked children. It's because people were taking pictures of naked children and victimizing them that they're like, okay, we need to make this illegal. So whenever you make something illegal, it means someone out there is doing them or wants to do it. And if you can create a victimless version of that, you know, 
It's like it's like O'Doul's. Oh, you know, yeah. it's like alcohol a yeah. non alcoholic beer. Yeah. People want to drink beer and some people can't get away with drinking just one and you give them an outlet to where they can act feel like a normal person and still live out their fantasy of being an alcoholic. Let the free market decide this shit, man. Like let the fuck like let stores go. You know what? We're not going to carry this game because it because right. we don't like what it does to our image. Yeah. Like that's completely fine. Like but don't whenever but this is UK in general. Nah, I go, wow, getting really political, but yeah. like government involvement. It's just so silly to me. It's just it, more and more government involvement just means less freedoms of of letting your people decide what they want to do and again, it's not damaging anybody in particular and it's just not it's just it's yeah like you said you're, you're closing the doors and you're on your uh you're paving the way for abuse somewhere else because they can't get their outlets but i don't know we're taking kind of the extreme route with this but in terms of in terms like back to where we are or the beginning with the, with the fan service game itself like it's just who cares like really who cares like, but the thing is, like, it's like it's a fine line. When is it? When are you sexualizing girls at this point? Like, so, like, if they release a game with girls in bikinis, is that all right. of a sudden sexualizing exactly. them now? Like, where does where do you? That's the that's the thing with this because it's not fair to other developers who are making different types of games, but because you view it a certain way, yeah, because you're viewing it, and and it's, and also in a, in a one point of view, you could argue that. You could sexualize any game. You could sexualize any 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 um character in a game. If it's up to the person to sexualize it. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I it's it's a strange choice by uh, you know they they've always been not as bad as Australia, but um, the UK has always been a bit touchy when it comes to things like this and. Yeah, like you said, the free market, I think that's the good option, the best option. You know, like uh, they didn't release um, Beach Volleyball, Dead or Alive Beach Volleyball 3 here. Yeah. And it's not because we said that they it couldn't come out here. It was because the company was like, eh, maybe not the best time to release this over there. And it's probably going to cause a bunch of upset people and you know they can we'll make an english version for and they can import it we'll it, give we'll exactly. put english english language and uh yeah that's basically you're letting the market decide and it's just yeah so if they wanted to release it there they should have been able to i don't think censorship is ever a good idea no, i don't care how you feel about certain content because there's a lot of content out there that i think is terribly disgusting like, sure and like, like it, the uh mm-hmm. like the movie movies you know like scary movie and uh, <laughs> superhero movie yeah there's like things like that but I, but i'm not about to like sit there in a political like city hall hearing and say i need this band because i don't like it and it's bad it's in and, and the thing is or like i don't want this to end up in my children's hands and it's just like okay well th- let let the companies decide that let the companies decide if they want to hurt their brand name enough and then at that point, it goes down to the company. Then it goes down to the store. Do they want to distribute this thing? There are a lot of factors. There's a reason that we don't walk into GameStop and we see... Because adults-only games come out, by the way. They right. are real. And we don't go to a GameStop and see those games on the shelves. Yeah, because they don't carry them. Because they don't carry them. Because they don't want to do that to their brand name. It's damaging to them because they feel that their overall bottom line will be affected by it. Because yeah. that's not the business they're running. But if I want to go into a porn shop and buy some creepy... like ps4 tentacle porn game yeah that's, that should be my right to do so yeah exactly it should be your right to buy it and your right to sell it the government should not be stepping in and say this is too dirty for you guys that's just insulting and especially it's just because we, we even have to argue just the, the point of the fact that they're discriminating against the particular medium at that point well if it's not illegal then there should be no question about it, it should just be uh, if you want to play this and buy it you're welcome to and like you said the market will decide if it sells well then then it does and if it doesn't sell well then yeah i just want to point out if you have a problem with these games you have a problem with like lollicon hentai that's fine i completely there are many arguments against it yeah. that you can make protest it tweet about it tell uh shame companies for, for for bringing it out that is your right to do so but it, it is not your right to, to sit there and make an argument that the government should step in. Yeah, or that you know what's best for someone. Exactly. 
So that's where I'm at. On that note, uh, that'll wrap this. That'll wrap this podcast up. All right. <laughs> oh my so God. we'll end it on the, uh, the tentacle porn. Yeah, tentacle porn. So if you made it this far, thanks again for listening. Uh, I'm Pat. I'm Bauman. And uh, yeah, you can subscribe to us on Google Play Music, Podbean, iTunes, and uh, we we post the video version of this on YouTube. So subscribe to the Game Boys on YouTube, and we'll be seeing you next week. See ya.